All right, well, we've looked at two specific alleged Eucharistic miracles, both of which there seems to be some evidence for. Uh, can you give us some examples of alleged Eucharistic miracles that the church said, actually, there's a, there's a natural explanation for this? Sure, there's one actually in the United States in 2015, and you can bring up um, the, the number eight, there, yeah, eight, sorry, eight. I, yeah, I accidentally put that up before, but here it is again. So this, okay, so this was not from Poland. I, I accidentally put that up, forgive me. Not from Poland, from Utah in November of 2015, uh, in Kearns, Utah, a host was returned to a priest after Mass, and in a similar way, he placed it in an ablution bowl, mm -hmm. uh, this vessel of water for it to dissolve away. Uh, but then later on, some people saw the host still floating there, and it appeared to be bleeding. So this sounds very similar to Sokolka. But then the diocese took the host and had a committee examine it with all the experts. And here was their conclusion. A thorough investigation has concluded that the host did not bleed. Hmm. The change of the appearance in the host was due to red bread mold. What? Neurofibra crassa. The How consecrated bizarre. host disposed of in a reverent manner as is required. So what you're seeing in that picture is red bread mold. It's a very well-known type of mold. There are other bacteria, Serratia marcescens, which also has this kind of red look. So that you know that can happen with bread too if it just kind of gets old That's and moldy. That's never <laughs> happened to me. I've never seen red bread mold. I didn't realize that was a thing. Yeah. So you need to know and do your science. Uh, unfortunately, in this case, the hype and the news about it spread faster than the scientific investigation, right? People are kind of like spreading news. And yeah. so there are reports from places that, oh, maybe there's a Eucharistic miracle in, in Utah. But then, you know, a few weeks later, uh, no, there wasn't. <laughs> this is what happened. Now, just so you know, this particular type of mold was explicitly tested for in the other miracles that I'm describing. I was ask that, yeah. <laughs> right? The, the bishop said, test for this, <laughs> right? Because, uh, you know, this is a very common thing that you need to rule out. So mm. uh, the church is, is well aware of these molds. <laughs> because yeah, it'd be, it'd be interesting kind of... how many Catholics in this parish in Utah are still convinced that this was a miracle. Well, this is the value of having... Uh, a magisterium that can, can that can make declarations about contested matters, right? Is that, you know, we need to follow the guidance of the magisterium, first of all, on, you know, the deposit of faith, things that we are required to believe, but also we should look for guidance about these prudential judgments. I mean, obviously the church can be wrong when declaring something a miracle, right? It's not infallible, right? It's, it's, but when, when the church says, condemn something, says this is not authentic, I really think we need to follow that and not just, you know, kind of fight with the bishop to try to prop mm -hmm. up whether it's a yeah. revelation, whether it's a yeah. uh, miracle, right? We, because that's what this sober look with scientific experts and theologians uh, is for. Yeah, yeah. Thank you for watching this clip. You can click here to watch the full episode. And I want to say a big thanks to our sponsors and to our amazing patrons for making all of this possible. Please do us a favor before you go, click that subscribe button and then the bell. And that way YouTube will be forced to let you know every time we put out a new episode.